The Canon M50 is a great camera for videos and vlogging, but it's also an awesome camera for photos. And so in this video, I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks to get the best photography out of your Canon M50, as well as share some adapters and some lenses that'll take your photo game to the next level. Let's go. You gotta just press record. Hey, what's up? It's Omar al with Think Media, helping you build your influence with online video. And this channel, we do tech gear reviews, but also tutorials and tip videos just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So when the Canon M50 first came out, we were super pumped about it, not only because of its small form factor, its ability to shoot incredible video, having incredible autofocus, but because of it being a mirrorless camera, it actually makes taking photos a lot easier than your traditional DSLR. So why is that? That is because this is a mirrorless camera, and so you essentially get to see the photo you're gonna take before you take it. With traditional DSLRs, you always usually ha would have to take a test shot because the viewfinder would be optical and not digital. When you use this viewfinder and or screen, it is digital. And so you get to see your settings in real time, not having to take test shots to make sure your settings are right. If it looks good to the eye looking into the camera, then that's the image you're gonna get. Just a quick note before we get into the rest of the video is this video is not a pro level photography video. This video is for those who just want an easy way to get the best photos possible with their Canon M50s. And so with that being said, the first thing I want you to do is to set your display mode from guided to standard. The M50 is a great camera for beginners and I love the idea that it has a guided mode. However, it does restrict you from being able to do a lot of custom things when you have the guided mode on. So changing it to standard will help you get the most out of your M50. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is change your dial to the M, which is manual. This is a great mode to really have full control over all your settings like ISO, aperture, shutter speed, and things of that nature. Don't get overwhelmed. I think there's a great rule of thumb to get started when you're shooting in manual, and that is simply setting your shutter speed to 1 1 25th of a second, lowering your aperture to as low as possible, and setting your ISO to auto. This will allow your camera to do most of the work in exposing your image. Now, if you need to darken your image, you're gonna crank up your shutter as needed until your exposure meter is at around zero. I just think one 1 25th of a second is a good place to start, especially when shooting indoors or when the sun is setting. I don't encourage going lower than one 1 25th of a second for your shutter speed because Holding the camera handheld, it's hard to keep steady as a photographer uh, and not provide motion blur. Now, if you're using a tripod, you can get away with lowering your shutter speed to a little bit lower than that. However, either way, I don't encourage going that low and really pushing it is like 1 60th of a second. So just keep that in mind when taking photos, especially when you're shooting handheld. The next step is changing your image quality to RAW. If you plan on editing your photos uh, on your laptop or on your computer using programs like Adobe Lightroom or any other photo editing software, having a RAW image file is best to work with because it retains the most detail and data. The best illustration I could think about is like baking a cake. What, Omar, we're talking about photography. What are you talking about baking a cake? So essentially, shooting RAW images is like the ingredients of a cake. You can manipulate it. You can, you know, add a little bit more sugar. You can add in a little bit more milk, add a another egg, or in photography terms, you can bring down the highlights a little bit, bring up the shadows because there's so much that you can still maneuver with because it's a raw file. Now, a JPEG is like the final baked cake. Once you take the cake out of the oven, you can't really adjust the ingredients of the cake. And so when you tell your camera to only shoot in JPEG, you're actually limiting your ability to change some of the settings in post. And so a good rule of thumb is to shoot in RAW. If you don't really care to actually edit your images in post, then by all means shoot in JPEG. And I think the best way to do that is to shoot in the large JPEG file, just so you're shooting the biggest picture possible. But we really encourage shooting in RAW, especially if you plan on editing your photos in post. The next tip is your autofocus settings. When you're looking in your camera, make sure you tap the cue on the top right. And then on the top left where it says AF, you wanna make sure you select tracking as your autofocus mode and then on your autofocus operation right below you want to change it from one shot to servo what's great about servo is it simply tracks whatever you tap to focus on and whether you move or whether the subject moves it'll keep them in focus which brings me to the next tip and that is touch shutter the m50 has a cool feature that allows you to simply tap on a subject focus on it and it'll take the picture all with one tap 
That makes taking photos very, very easy. However, if you ever wanted to play with the autofocus, like tap on a subject and then move around and you didn't want it to take a picture, you simply have to toggle it off by tapping the icon on the bottom left of the screen. Once you tap it, it disables it, and then you can simply tap on stuff and you no longer have to worry about it taking a picture. Now, if you just wanna turn it back on, tap on the screen and now you've enabled it and it, you're good to go. The next step is to consider investing in prime lenses. Prime lenses are probably the most affordable way to get the most pro looking photos possible. The reason being is because whenever looking at a photo, usually the distinguishing factor is that super blurry background. And when you have your subject in focus and that background super blurry, pictures usually look pretty darn cool. And the way to achieve that is with very low apertures. If you bought the M50 and it came with a lens, the likelihood is that you got a kit lens with that camera and kit lenses aren't really designed to get you that super blurry background. However, we actually made a video on the best lenses for the Canon M50 to get you the best quality looking footage and or photos as much as possible. Make sure you check out that video. We'll put a link to it in the card and in the description below. And while we're talking about lenses, I quickly wanna bring up lens adapters. Now the Canon M50 has an EFM mount and a very limited mount as far as what lenses are offered for photography, they have great vlogging lenses with this mount, and Sigma just dropped a new lens too, which is pretty cool. And by the way, we'll put all this info and links in the description below, so please, please check it out. But lens adapters are pretty cool because it kind of unlocks your camera to do more by mounting different kinds of lenses on it. And so just keep that in mind. We actually also made a video on this Viltrox adapter, a super cool adapter that turns your camera, kind of life hacks it into a full frame camera. So make sure you check out that video too. We'll put that in the YouTube card and in the description below. Man, there's so much good stuff on the M50. Let me plug that playlist, by the way. We have a playlist that talks about all things M50 to help you get the most out of your M50. And so just make sure you check that out. I think it's gonna be super beneficial if you really wanna maximize your use on this camera. Before I get into the next tip, why don't you smash that like button for me if you've been getting value out of this video. And the next tip is to use presets on your photos. What I love about presets is they just simply bring your images to life. You know, if you follow somebody on Instagram and you love their account, maybe there's uh, some consistency there or there's a vibe that you see, uh, the likelihood is that they are using a preset on all their photos. And so it's really key if you wanna create a vibe with your photography to find a preset that works best for you. I actually sell my own presets. If you wanna check those out, I'll put a link to them in the description below, but I've designed these presets to look good on any kind of photos you take. So whether you're doing landscape or if you're doing you know, portrait photography, these presets are designed to look great on no matter what kind of photos you take. So those are some tips that I hope will get your photo game to the next level. Question of the day is what kind of photography are you into? Do you like doing portraits, landscape, engagement shoots? Let me know in the comment section below and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Take it easy.